Welcome to Growing Wings, where we bring you inspiration to unlock your superpowers. I am your host, Kira Lani. I help healers master their energy to unleash their gifts and stand in their power. I bring you back to your true nature, connecting to the divine within to heal the imprints that life has placed upon you and move into your best life ever. And I am so excited for our guest today, all the way joining us from the UK. I'm over here on the West Coast of the United States. We have Ray Kalnan. Ray Kalnan of radiant angel energy and she just radiates this angel energy she is your guide to taking charge of your destiny do you ever feel like you are at a crossroads and you aren't sure which way to go well, you will want to stay tuned in to this show today. Welcome, Ray. Hello. Hi. And we have Lorne Lee joining. Hello, beautiful Lorne Lee. Thank Hello. you for joining in. And whether you are joining us live or watching the replay, please do let us know you're here. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We are spanning continents and oceans and gathering together as a worldwide audience. It's always really fun to see where everybody joins from in all the different time zones. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. And if the conversation inspires you, please let your friends know we're here. Share this out to your communities and connect to this wisdom of finding your destiny. And it's, it's something that you can actually create for yourself. I'm really excited to hear Ray's perspective on this topic. And oh, hello, Linda is here. Yay, welcome. Linda. Welcome. So Ray, I would love to just dive right in and hear from you. What is your superpower? What unique gift do you bring to the world? And how do you use it to help others? Hi, Kira. Thanks for having me on the show and thank you to everyone watching. Um, my superpower, it's something that I've had since I was a child, but I didn't realize when a child that I actually had it until um, I actually started doing all the work I did. And that's the ability to help people to go within and to help them become the best possible person that they can to take charge of their destiny, to, you know, which will allow, allows them to spread their wings and spread their wings and be the highest spiritual person they can be in this lifetime. To, to sort of like um, release stuff stuff from the past so they can actually move forward with in their in their lifetime in their future and when I thought think back to when I was a child I actually was one of those children who at school I was in the middle group so I wasn't with all the geeks and all those that got picked on I wasn't with the cool crowd kids I was kind of like always in the middle but I always looked after the ones that were on the periphery, the ones that no one really wanted to talk to. And I'd always spend time with them, building up their confidence. And they sort of like became more middle and and with, with the core group. So I kind of like brought both groups together, um, which obviously as a child, you don't realise that's what you're doing at the time. But when I look back now, I realise that's what I was doing. And that's what I continue to do um, in now as an adult is help people become the best possible person that, that, that they should be in the here and now. Mm, beautiful. I love how you speak to being a bridge between different worlds and, 
And so I'm seeing this both as a connecting point between people and then also a connecting of this physical reality that we experience in the human body with something greater that is informing the destiny that your clients are taking charge of. And so tell us a little bit more, Ray, about your journey. How did you come to realize that this was your path? How did you come to take charge of your own destiny? Okay, well, um, I kind of like, kind of like, as, as a kid, I kind of like knew there was there was there was something. In, you know, I, I was brought up in a very spiritual family. You know, my mum did um, palmistry and psychometry, had an aunt who did tarot cards, and my dad was quite accommodating, taking my mum to spiritual churches, and me and my sister went along. So I got to meet all all lots of, of different people. So it's always been there in somewhere along the line. But as a child, you don't really kind of like question it or know any different um, or even sometimes go really with it because it's just there and you, and you just go along with it. Um, but I found at school, I had lots of friends who wanted to be friends with me because, you know, I'd come home with bits of girls' hair in their, um, envelopes for my mum to do psychometry on, on their bit of hair, you know, to, to see you know, what their next boyfriend was going to be. And I remember once um, some people in school wanted to um, do an Ouija board, um, which is something I don't, I, I, I don't get involved with. And it's like, no, 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 I'm not interested. And they're going, but can you please come along and just make sure we all stay safe? <laughs> you know, it's like, so I had to stand in a room whilst they, whilst they, whilst they, were, whilst they were doing it. But uh, kind of like I left, I left school as most people do. And, you just get caught up in teenage years, boys, work, um, you know, find, find, finding your way in life. Um, but the pagan side has sort of like always been, been with me, working with the elements, um, being connected to trees and nature, which is why it's, it's nice to connect with you because of your connection with, with, with the trees. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that was always there and I dabbled in Wicca. Um, and, and and that for for a while um but I just didn't really do any didn't do much with it I just kind of like got on with with my life and then I took um a trip to Peru and it was whilst I was in Peru it was one of the most um uh, amazing life-changing um, journeys that I had and when I came back to England I came back in the October November and I was sitting in the office because I was doing office work then and I remember looking out the window and it was raining, it was dark, it was, it was miserable. And I was sitting thinking, I'd much rather be out there doing something than sitting in this office. Um, so it kind of like starts, I kind of like started, you know, looking around, what, what could I do that wasn't, wasn't about? And then angels just started coming, coming into my life. And back then, so we're talking about 2000 odd, there was a lot of stuff about angels about. I mean, I to get any angel objects, I had to sign up to a Christmas catalogue to buy angel things. And the only books I could get were from Ireland because angels were quite big over there. But in this country, in the UK, it wasn't really um, that, that popular. And it's through working with the angels um, that I found Angelic Crakey and then working with Angelic Crakey that I met some of the people I have met that's led me on to different, um, different, different pathways, uh, um, seeing different things. And then in, I've always had an interest in um, hypnosis um, and, the, and the mind because I'm, I'm very analytical. Although I'm quite into, uh, um, you know, spiritual, I know there are angels, unicorns, etc. If someone comes to me with something new, I will research it. I will go deep into it before I actually go. Yes, that that is that is absolutely absolutely correct. So so I always do lots of digging and, and research. I don't just accept anything comes along. So the mind has always been a thing. So then it was the chance to do hypnosis, and I did hypnosis because I wanted to do past life regression because I'd had past life regression done on myself both physically and with readings. 
and it's stuff that come up in my past kind of like resonated with stuff that was happening in, in my present so I wanted to learn it and through that I got future life progression went forward um, and amongst all that um, meditation came in angel cards came in so so it's all sort of like came into came in together and I kind of like when I sat down to think how did it all happen you know how do I get to the point that I knew I, um, what I was supposed to be here to do is through having the past life regression and doing the future life progression and working with the angelic reiki and doing my own meditations going deep with inside myself connecting to my higher self that everything just started to make to, to make sense um, and I was getting rid of the past stuff the future stuff and I was really concentrating on me here and now um, and that's when I thought right this is this is this is really what what I need to be doing is helping people to be fully present so that they they can be in charge of, of their life of their destiny and go where they want to go mm, oh, I love how you brought it full circle Ray so if you are watching this live or watching the replay, be sure to drop any questions that you have for Ray. She is bringing in a lot of different pieces into this puzzle. And so Ray, you spoke of going into past life regressions and future life progress mm. and connecting to angels. And then all of these different things really just brought you back into being present with yourself in the present moment and so um so why do we need all these things why not just, like be present if it was that simple it would be brilliant you know if if if, if, if you know if everyone could say yes i I'm, I'm not letting the past affect me i'm not worrying about the future i'm just totally in the present oh my God, that would be so amazing. The world would be such a better place. Um, you know, and everyone would be kinder to each other. They'd all know what they were doing. Um, unfortunately, it's not like that, um, which, which, is, which is a shame because that's where we, that's where we want to go. You know, that's where we, where we, where we want to be. So um, unfortunately, we do have to, um, in this human form that we're in, we have to look at healing our past so that it doesn't affect us in our present. And we need to look at our future so that we're not worried about where we're going, what, what we're doing. We can concentrate on being in the here and now, which allows us to connect with angels and our higher selves, to know exactly where we're going, what we're doing, and bring all our gifts and, and our joy into the world. Hmm, beautiful. Yeah, I love that, and and I'm still uh, I'm still curious to learn a little bit more about how angels fit into this picture. It seems like it's a very big piece on your journey. How much do the angels inform your work now, and and in what ways? Uh, the the angels kind of like are just always there, um, and I suppose that's <laughs> that that's why I don't talk too much about them because to me they're just they're just there all, all all the time i'm working with them um all the time i mean i don't see angels i've never seen an angel you know i've, I've got two two guardian angels so i'm a bit greedy you know everyone has their own guardian angel when they're born um, which, which i had but then during um, a meditation um i was actually um said oh by the way you've got another guardian angel as well and it's like, oh brilliant i've got two um so they're always sort of like here with me, but I've never actually seen them. I couldn't tell you what they look like, what they sound like, because for me, I just know, and I know they're there. And quite often what comes into my head and out of my mouth, it's all channeled. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's um, from the angels, from, from source, from, from, from my higher self. So angels to me are always kind of like, they, you know, they're another type of energy because we're all energy. You know, um, as, you, as, as you know, everything vibrates as, as an agenda level. We just vibrate on different dimensions. So mm -hmm. angels are there. And, and where I work with angels, when people know their guardian angel or they connect with, with the angels, they kind of like 
find things start to change a little bit in their life. They kind of like get a little bit more guidance about where they're going, what, what they're doing. You know, I run an afternoon tea with the angels once a month and the people that have been coming to, to that, you know, some of them have found their the name of their guardian angel. They've started talking to them on a daily basis. You know, some see fe- are literally seeing feathers everywhere. Others are seeing coins, uh, mm. you know, and they're using them to find parking spaces and just get a sense of, of, of where they are in the world. And that kind of like comes through with the angelic Reiki when I do the angelic Reiki healing on, on, on somebody um, because I've become a bridge between the angel and the person to who the healing is being done. So the angel connects directly with the person uh, and that kind of like sets them a little bit on, on their journey. So, so yeah, I don't really, angels are all, it's, it's kind of like really weird because angels are always there. So I tend to just accept that they, that they are there. Does that make sense? I love that. And I, I have only myself connected specifically to angels in in the process of joining the Akashic Academy and the online community. And I have had some amazing results from just asking for the angels to help me. And so this is something that I invite you out there to just play with. I I created my own little chant when I decided to ask the angels of abundance to come into my life and help me to stay on track with my abundance. I don't ask angels or God or spirits to do things for me because that's not how it works. I ask them to bring me the inspiration and the dedication to stay on track to create my reality the way that I want it. And so I made a little chant to my abundance angels when I light a candle or an incense on my altar. I say, um, stay with me, dance with me, play with me. And I say that dance and play because to me, that's where we step into that vibration of creation. When we allow ourselves to go into that playful, childlike imagination place. And um, we do have some questions coming in, which I'm really okay. excited to check in with the audience. A goat says, I work with and for the angels. Brilliant. She says, I would love to be in my superpowers. What can I best do? She had some more comments about angels up here too. She said she's close to Archangel Michael, starting with asking for car space, no Mm -hmm. protection. Oh, I think she says now I started asking for car space, now asking for protection, yeah. Angels also protect us guide and send us stuff to learn from growing with them. So it sounds to me like you are already on your, on track to connecting more deeply with your superpowers um, in terms of asking what can you best do? What insight do you have for a goat today, Ray? Um, I mean, I mean, that goat's already doing a brilliant thing by actually, you know, speak speaking to the angels um and, and you need to speak to them every day you know i wake up in the morning i say good morning to 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 my guardian angels you know i speak to them during during the day you know general conversation that you'd have with the person next to you before i go to bed i thank them for their help for their day and i say i say good night to them so the more that you connect with them the more you you gain the guidance you gain the guidance from them, but you have to remember always to thank them uh, as, as, as well. So I would say you've already started on that journey. So connect with the angels, you know, through meditation, you know, if, if you've got, if you know your guardian angel, you know, speak, speak to your guardian angel and just in meditation, ask, where do I need to go next? What do I need to know for my highest good? at this moment in time and see what guidance you're given, whether it's um, through uh, thoughts or words or 
um, a song that comes on or something you see on the TV or some, something you read. But just be open to look for the signs because angels are very good at giving us signs. We don't often see them. We don't tend. So if you're asking, start looking and noticing what's going on around, around you because unless it's something that's going to save your life, they're quite subtle. They don't really sort of like come in and go, um, you know, right, go go and join that group on, online. You know, they'll send you little they send you little hints. I mean, it's like when I went to Peru, um, I initially didn't know where I wanted to go. I knew I wanted to go somewhere. So I just was guided, okay, I'll go on to um uh Lonely Planet. Got on and they were doing an article on Peru. Oh, and that, that seems quite good. Send off for a few uh, looks to see what companies did trips to Peru. Um, you know, send off those brochures. Then a few days later, I turned on the TV. There was Stephen Fry doing a documentary on Peruvian bears. Okay, so so there's 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 Peruvian bears. And then I got these um, these brochures through, and it's like, oh, you know, they're they're a little bit you know a little bit expensive. You know, this one looks 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 really good, but I haven't got the money. And then at the time I was, um, I had to remortgage and the mortgage company made a mistake on my mortgage and they had to give me some extra money back because I paid too much. It was the exact amount of one of these brochures. And it's like, I really think I need to book this. And then a girl I was working with at the time, her grandfather died. She was clearing out his loft and she brought in an old Lonely Planet guidebook to Peru and an old Peruvian map and it's like okay I need to I need to I, you know I need to I need to book this so it's it's looking out for the spines so I say to Agat in the long-winded way that I've gone around and spoken about it is connect with your guardian angel or the angels and ask what you need to know for your highest good to get to to develop or understand your superpowers which are already there it's just getting them to come out and then look for signs and see what comes to you mm -hmm. i love the way that you shared ray that it, it is it isn't instantaneous and that's really important to remember when we're communicating with angels guides spirit god true source trees or mother yeah. guide whoever it is that are that falls under the category of your guides and spirits um, they don't nest they don't talk in words all the time sometimes they do sometimes messages come right through your thoughts and it's really clear oh that was an answer to my question i've noticed in my practice i'll ask the question and then i'll ask the question and then maybe the next day I realize, oh, that's the sign. Oh, that's what the answer is. And so patience is really important. So thank you for pointing to that, how it's not an instantaneous yeah. response very often. It, it can be, but it, it more often it will be subtle guidance that you just really have to pay attention once you ask for that help. So Cleopatra is asking, how do I know what's my spirit guide and what's my own thoughts? She says she wants to know her spirit guide, but she doesn't know how to differentiate her voice from the messages. So this is a great segue from what we were just talking about um, in terms of patience and recognizing those messages. Mm. And yes, it can come through your own thoughts. So yeah. I, I'm going to invite you, Cleopatra, to not discount that your spirit guide may guide you through your own thoughts. And I also recognize how confusing that can be when you're, you have these thought patterns going on. So. Ray, what insight do you have into this? How do you recognize the spirit voice versus your own thoughts? Um, again, again, it's as you said. It, in, in each in, in each person, it's it's completely different as to to how they do, you know. And sometimes my thoughts are um, are the thoughts from from my higher self. 
but I reckon I know I recognize the difference in how I feel in my heart mm-hmm. if 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 my heart feels you know that whatever I've heard is 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 happy then that's my spirit guides my angels giving me the answer if my heart kind of like feels you know that there's nothing really there then that's my e then to me that's my ego side um you know no coming out and it's also that I try not to think so much about it which is why quite often when I'm talking as I'm doing now most of the stuff that is, is, is technically being channeled through me which is which is why I tend to go off rambling everywhere here there because if I was to sit down and start thinking about it then my ego self would literally come in and it's kind of like it'll be what I want to what I want to put out rather than what people need to, for them what people need to know so it's just learning to to reckon recognize which is your own thoughts your ego side and which are the messages that you've been given and all messages even if they come through as your own thoughts come through as a feeling of joy and love and, mm-hmm. and that's I think how you how you can tell tell the difference with with any messages that come through if they're done without any blame with love joy then that then that's more than likely um guidance coming through but if they come through with fear or telling you you know that you shouldn't be doing this or you should be doing that then that might just be your ego coming in and trying to take over if that makes sense yeah thank you um cleopatra is saying um thank you so much and she also said maybe i should practice more meditation too oh most definitely and cleopatra what else was coming through for me as ray was sharing about how the knowing comes from a feeling and so i invite you also to have a moving meditation practice that really gets you into your body because when you have a strong body awareness, then you tune in more to the subtle vibrations that come through with different thought patterns. And so a lot of the way that I connect to guidance is through, similar to what Ray said, sensations in my body. So sometimes I feel it in my heart. Sometimes I feel it like a vibration in my spine that I connect with kind of the kundalini activation sometimes i feel like a vibrating in my wing space and so when you feel when you learn to tune into the feeling sensations then it can really gel oh yeah that's the guidance that i need to be following because i can feel it and as long as you're still feeling contraction then you're probably stuck in a thought pattern and that's what's creating the doubt. And so when we drop into the sensations in our body, it can really help a go to saying, trust your heart intention to talk to the angels. Very yeah. beautiful. And yeah, we have some great comments. I may not be able to get to every one of your comments. I'm kind of scrolling through. Um, Carla says she doesn't know their names and different come ones come in for different reasons. And, and, you know, I got, when I first started exploring working with angels, I got a little bit stuck on the names. And I think that that was a block for me to even connecting with them because I was like, I didn't connect to that. When I started thinking of angels more as beneficent beings who will help us, um, I think, somebody who works with angels said this, I don't remember what her name was, um, that we can just connect to, like I was saying, the angels of abundance or the angels of love or the angels of protection. And they don't have to have names. And, And so that is perfectly a good way to connect with them, Carla, is just to connect with what are they helping you with? And, um, Cleopatra is saying thank you and recently been feeling I recently I love have been feeling a buzzing in my head 
so yeah that's something to tune into when you're getting that vibration and yes a goat it is lovely to feel the wings opening yes 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 love all these comments keep them coming if i don't get to your comments live i will be sure to scroll back through after we get off the show and check in with each and every one of you you are so valued as participants in this work that we're doing we don't want to talk in an echo chamber. We're here to share with the community. And so thank you so much for engaging. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, it's been an amazing show today. And oh, look, Callie Bird is here. Hey, hey, beautiful. Hello. You are just in time for us to dive into an experience with the beautiful Ray. So before we do, before we go into the meditation itself, I'd love to hear just a little bit more, Ray, about when you are working with your clients to help them take charge of their destiny. Now, do you find that each person needs to go into their past lives and into their future lives and connect with the angels? And is, is this, is it sometimes like one person needs more of one thing or another? How do you work with your clients? A good, good question. Everyone is unique and, and individual and no clients I've, I've ever worked with have, have had the same experiences. Some people need to work more on their past life. Some people need to work more on their future life. Other people need to work more, more with their angels. Um, and, and what I tend to do when I, because uh, I've, I've got a um, three-month uh, Transform Your Present uh, um, uh, where, I, where I use all, all of those. And normally, I, normally if I do that, I start with, with Angelic Reiki for the angels to come in and heal and see what comes up for that. But quite often when I, when I take people because if, if I, when I take people into past life or future life, or, or, or especially past life, I always take them back to a point that is most relevant for what is the situation they need to deal with in their present time. And sometimes pe people will go, well, I, I think in my past life there was something I, I need to heal. But when we go into it, they don't actually go into their past life. And when they're in that relaxed state, I get them to talk to their higher selves and it's like the higher selves will tell them, actually, it's not your past life you need to go into. You need to go into your future life. Hmm. Or it may be, actually, we need to talk to, you need to talk to your angel now and you're in this space that you that you can talk to your angel. So it's it's all really organic. It's how I'm interacting with, with, with the client, how they interact with me, what I'm being guided to to, to take them on. But the most, but most importantly, it's their higher selves guiding them, and that's that's the way I work. I I'm I'm like a guide. I'm holding the space for you and guiding you, but you are the ones doing all the work. You're the ones that choose if you're going back to heal the past, whether you're going into the future, whether you're connecting with angels. I just guide you and hold the space for you to do that because it's your journey, hmm. not mine. Um, and by you taking the journey yourself, you have the chance to open your wings and go where you should be going, not where I think you should be going. Mm, I love that. I, I totally resonate with that so much. And I know sometimes my clients ask me about past lives and, and I say to them, well, well, the work that I do is about healing what needs to be healed. So if there's something in a past life that needs to be healed, it will come up. And so I love hearing that you are also working with mm. how each individual is guided to heal because our higher self knows our oh, energy, God, yeah. our, our body awareness, our, our body wisdom knows, right? Our inner wisdom can come out when given the right tools. And so I'd love to experience a little bit of how you might help someone enter into this. I know it'll just be a brief taste of the amazing superpowers of Ray Kalman. So take it away, my dear. 
Okay, well, I, I'm kind of like getting the idea that, that maybe connecting with your guardian angel and finding their name might actually be a good stepping point um, for, for, for people if they, if they don't already know their guardian angel's name, and if they do, of actually asking what they need to know for their highest good at this, at this, mo at this moment in time. And the thing to remember is this, even if you're not given a name, don't worry about it. Because it's like I said before, names are something we as humans want to give things. We want to, we want to label things. Angels are just energy, um, the same as us, but they vibrate on a different dimension. But they can cover all sorts of things. So you might not know a name, but you might know a feeling. So if you don't get a name, don't worry about it. Just see what you connect with in your heart and what, and what you feel like. Um, so if anyone wants to close their eyes and as you do, take a deep breath in and on the out breath, just let go of anything that doesn't need to be in this space at this time and take another deep breath in, just giving yourself total permission to relax and on the out breath, just releasing any negativity or doubt. And just allow your breathing to become natural to your own rhythm. Each in-breath relaxing you more. And each out-breath just releasing anything that no longer needs to be with you. And as you're breathing, I want you to see, feel, imagine or know a beautiful golden light above your head. It's a beautiful golden light of peace and relaxation and just see, feel, imagine or know this beautiful golden light moving down into your aura, surrounding your body like the old UK Ready Break ads with the golden glow around the body. And now allow, see, feel, imagine or know this beautiful golden light moving into your physical body, filling it up completely, every cell, every membrane, every space between every cell and every membrane. And as this happens, just feel yourself relaxing, your whole head relaxing, your eyelids relaxing, your jaw feeling so relaxed, your neck relaxing. This feeling of relaxation moves into your shoulders and your shoulders are just so relaxed. This relaxation moves down your arms all the way to your fingertips. And this relaxation moves into your upper body and you feel your chest and your stomach relaxing. The whole of your back, your spine, your buttocks, your hips, your pelvis, your legs from your upper legs all the way down to your feet and your toes and your whole body just feels so totally relaxed. Now I want you to see, feel, imagine or know yourself standing outside a beautiful mansion a mansion in the bright sunlight with a beautiful blue sky and a cloud in it. And as you're standing in front of this mansion, you see five wide steps leading down into a beautiful garden. And in a moment, you're going to start walking down these steps from five to one each descending number relaxing you more. So if you're ready now, start walking down the stairs five, going deeper down the stairs four, deeper down the stairs three, deeper down the stairs two, all the way down the stairs one. And as you take a step off, you see yourself in the most beautiful garden you could ever imagine. It may be filled with flowers or trees, ornamental waterfalls, butterflies, birds, bees. It's your garden. 
There might be the most beautiful scents from the flowers. Might be a gentle breeze in the air just rustling the leaves of the trees. You feel the coolness on your skin. And you start to walk through your garden, walking through your garden to a beautiful oak tree that you can see in the distance. It's a magnificent oak tree full of ancient wisdom and knowledge. And it's like it's welcoming you to come and sit with it. And as you get closer, you see that some of the roots are expanded and out in the open. And they look just like the arms of a chair. And you notice that there's the most beautiful green grass between these roots, just like a cushion, ready for you to sit down. So you sit down with your back against this beautiful oak tree and you feel its ancient wisdom and knowledge and you feel it grounding you fully in the here and now, connecting you to Gaia, to Earth. And as you sit there, just looking out onto your garden, Notice this feeling of unconditional love just coming in. This beautiful energy of unconditional love just starting to wrap itself around you. And you feel so at peace and so safe and so loved. And you instinctively know that this is your guardian angel who has come to be with you at this moment. So now just allow yourself to ask your guardian angel its name. They may give you a name. They may give you a thought or a feeling. Don't question it. Just go with whatever comes into your mind or your heart or your feeling. And I'm going to leave you just for a moment or two to communicate with your guardian angel and ask your guardian angel, what do I need to know for my highest good at this moment in time? And again, just allow whatever comes to you, come to you. And if nothing comes, then just feel the unconditional love around you. Remember, don't question how the guidance is coming. Just feel the love that the guardian angel is giving you. And in a moment, it will be time for you to come back. So if you have any last minute questions, ask your guardian angel now. Now it's time for your guardian angel to leave you, but you know that they are always there with you and you can always feel the unconditional love around you any time you wish. And as you thank your angel with gratitude and your heart open, your guardian angel may leave you a little gift. It may be something physical, it may be a word, a knowing, a song or a smell. And as you feel their energy just fade away from you, you're left with that feeling of unconditional love vibrating through every single cell and nerve of your body. And now you stand up and you 
turn round and you give the oak tree a big hug and thank it for being there, keeping you grounded and allowing all the energy and the wisdom to stay within you. And now you start walking back through your garden, back towards the steps that lead you up to the mansion. And by the time I get to five, you will be fully back, fully present in the room, remembering everything of your journey. So start walking up the stairs now, one, coming further up the stairs, two, further up the stairs, three, feeling coming back into your body, further up the stairs, four, all the way to the top of the stairs, five, wiggle fingers, toes, open your eyes, make sure you're fully back. If you have a drink, drink some water. And welcome back. Mm, thank you. That was beautiful. Mm. Taking a drink of water. And wow, I I was getting thunder noises during your meditation. And at the very end, I realized that that was part of the message that was coming through for me. And the way that it was coming through is about the, the powerful energy of a storm and the way that we can utilize the energy of the challenges in our lives. And this is something that is always very present for me in the work that I do with myself and my clients, but it's really been brought forth to a new level recently. And so I was like, wow, this is so strong. And it was coming after at when we first went into the meditation, before you really started guiding us in at all, I felt the presence really strongly of my sister who recently passed and a recognition that she is now one of my angels. And then when we sat by the tree, I found myself at first connecting to the tree as is my habit. Trees are some of my greatest guides. Mm -hmm. and, and so at first I was like, oh, it's this comfortable place of being with the tree. And then this pure white light energy came through. And um, I don't usually, like I said earlier, connect with names, but I felt the presence of Ariel. And so I'm going to do a little bit more work with connecting to Ariel. She's come through for me before, and I think I've neglected that connection a little bit. <laughs> so, um, and then I felt that she and my sister were working together. And then I felt, and then all of a sudden there was a really beautiful waterfall in, in my, that hadn't, hadn't really been present before. And all of a sudden the waterfall was there and I tuned into what is, the message that's needed in the waterfall. And um, there were two things that came through for me. One was a clearing of my channels, which is something that you can never do too much of. <laughs> no, no, no. And then the other one is the other piece of it was the nourishment and the need for me to spend more time next to flowing water. And so, so beautiful, so much came through and um, yeah. Oh, oh, look, a goat got the storm message. Oh, wow. I love the, I love the synchronicity. Cindy's going to come back and watch the replay. Thanks for joining. And Carla said, me too. I'm not sure which part of that was me too. But I love that we're having synchronicities in the, the messages that come through. A goat says she is lovely. And hi, Joanne. So if you are just joining us as we are wrapping up this show, do go back and watch the replay because a lot of amazing insights came through and Ray just led us through a beautiful guided meditation to help you connect with your guardian angel. And um, yeah, anything else that you want to bring through as we wrap it up, Ray? Um, 
Well, I, as, as you probably gathered from that, I love storytelling. I mean, I, I'm an avid reader and, and I, I love doing meditations, guided meditations, because, because I'm telling a story and, and I love stories. And I think what well, I, I, that I'm being guided to say to people is don't get so caught up on the story as to where you think it should be going. Allow the story, your journey, to unfold itself without any preconceived ideas. You know, that's the way my storytelling in the guide to meditations. I might have an idea, but I never know where they're going to go, where the journey's going to take. So it would be to anyone, anyone watching, don't get caught up in, in your story. Just allow your story to unfold without diving too deep into, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. It will all unfold naturally if you stay in the present and stay in the flow um, with, with what you're doing. And if you think things, you go, oh, that's my imagination, go with it. Everything stems from imagination. If you think about um, Apple, that came from Bill Gates's imagination. He thought, I imagine this, this great big business and it became reality. So imagination or thoughts become reality, but just let them flow. That's all you need to do. Mm. Such beautiful advice, Ray. Thank you for bringing okay. that through for all of us to remember, to allow our stories to unfold. If we tell the story, we may, um, we may miss those connections if we yeah. get up in the story. And so staying present with what is such beautiful advice. Thank you so much. And You're welcome. As we are wrapping up, Ray, um, if our audience would like to connect with you more and learn more about your work or experience more of it, how would they do so? Um, well, I have my um, Facebook page, Radiant Angel Energy, um, where I uh, post daily angels, say messages, and any events that I'm doing, I, I post on. I post on there. Um, but they can also find me via my website, www.radiantangelenergy.co.uk, which obviously tells a lot more about about what I do. And I will be doing a. Um, five-day meditation cha challenge at the end of this month um 7 30 uk time for five days i'll be doing um five live guided meditations um to help you on your journey and they'll and they'll cover various themes during the five days um and i'll put the link in there if anyone wants to click on that to join to to join that challenge so yeah um facebook messenger or um my website are probably the easiest ways to actually connect with me and will you say your website again? I had a train going by and I missed the last part. It's it's Radiant Angel Energy. Energy dot co dot UK. Okay. That's what I thought you said. I'll pop that up here. And um, yeah, drop all your links in the comments below so people can come back if you're watching live or watching the replay. We will be here to connect with you more so do leave us comments and questions and reach out to ray for more of this beautiful connection with the deeper parts of life and bringing all of that into the present moment so beautifully expressed i you've been an amazing guest ray thank you so much for joining. Really, thank you for having me and and allowing me to speak oh absolutely my pleasure and for those of you out there that are seeking a deeper connection to your innate gifts and to heal what may be in the way of you bringing those forth into the world, please do reach out to me here on Facebook. I'm broadcasting from my Tree Gong Healing page. So if you want to make sure you catch all of the Growing Wings episodes, be sure to like Tree Gong Healing. And then you'll get the notifications when we go live here. And then they're on my business page so that you can also go back. Um, you can click on the video link and you can go back and watch the replays. I'm working on getting my YouTube channel more consistent. I do post things on my YouTube channel 
Practice Self Love. I also have a website, practiceselflove.com for more. And I really look forward to connecting with each and every one of you, whether it's through the comments or we speak one-on-one. -on -one. You are valued members of this community and your gifts are important. So please take the time to connect with yourself, to be present with yourself, to connect with your gifts, and then to bring them forth into the world because each one of us came into this incarnation for a reason, for with gifts to share. And it is so important that we have that connection. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Thank you so much for joining us, Ray, and I will see you all next time. Many blessings on your life. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.